let's look at series resonant inverters with bidirectional switches so the last one that we discussed the first one was with unidirectional switches and this one is with bidirectional switches this is a simple circuit um, there can be other um, variations of this circuit but this is a circuit that we are discussing so uh, the way this circuit works is of course you are going to activate Q1 observe that the diode is in the reverse bias uh, orientation with respect to Q1 so when you fire Q1 current is going to flow from Vs Q1 LC and as you can see you have a transformer here and on the secondary side you will have the load and this is called the isolation transformer basically it isolates the source from the load anyways so this is how um, the circuit is uh, the current is going to flow when you turn q1 on of course uh, the, the diode is going to be reverse biased at that time capacitor is going to be charged up to a value higher than vs as we saw in the in the first part it's going to charge up to vc1 let's say and when we turn uh, and when the current one uh, resonant pulse of the current is going to be passed and it drops down to zero um, q1 is going to turn off capacitor voltage will be greater than vs and diode is going to become forward bias so in the next half that is in the negative pulse resonant pulse lc and diode and the source the current is going to flow through capacitor inductor diode and finally your um, source so in the opposite direction and once this is gonna um, the, the pulse is gonna finish uh, the capacitor voltage is going to uh, go again to a smaller value in the negative direction as we saw again in the last one to negative VC let's say and then your diode is gonna become reverse bias and in the next cycle Q1 will be activated again and current is gonna flow in the positive direction so this is how it's going to look your Q1 is on for T1 amount of time and Q2 is on for next and you have some dead zone over here then Q1 will turn on and Q2 will turn on now if diode um, uh, if the conduction time of diode is large enough then the turn off time of Q1 then you won't have any uh, of these uh, dead zone so uh, Q1 will be completely off D1 will have the pulse and as soon as D1 will turn off uh, then you're gonna send another pulse to Q1 or you are, you're gonna send a base current or the gate uh, current or uh, gate voltage to Q1 and then the next cycle is gonna start right away and this is the capacitor voltage sorry it's, it's not gonna go to negative VC as I, I mentioned it's just gonna go to uh, zero uh, in when the diode is conducting and when it will become zero at that time all the current is gonna be gone through diode and then you can send a signal or send a uh, current to BJT Q1 or, or switch Q1 and the for, uh, forward cycle is gonna start so the voltage is from 0 to VC1 for the capacitor <coughs> so if there is no dead zone the output frequency will be equal to the resonant frequency 1 over LC this is the maximum output frequency depends on the switching time TSW 1 over 2 SW will be the maximum output frequency and these are the equations without any derivation I'm giving it these are the equations for the output current and the capacitor voltage and they are from the book the next one is half bridge resonant inverters with bidirectional switches this is the circuit right here okay so this is how it's going to work q1 is going to be fired then current is going to flow from vs q1 r l c2 and back to vs vs q1 r l c2 that's going to be one resonant pulse so when the current is going to go down to zero capacitor c2 will be charged 
to a value vc1 which is greater than vs so now what's going to happen is it's going to make this diode d1 forward bias so in the next negative pulse current is going to flow out of c2 c2 lr d1 and vs until that pulse is finished and then we are going to turn q2 on current is going to go through vs c1 l r q2 and back to vs one pulse but in the negative direction because the current is flowing in the direction opposite of this i naught we are assuming i naught direction is our positive direction so now you have two negative pulses one negative pulse when current was coming out of c2 l r d1 and vs it was going in the direction opposite of i naught and when that pulse is going to end then the neg second negative pulse c1 l r q2 and vs when this pulse is gone c1 will be charged to a value higher than vs d2 is going to become forward bias and current is going to flow c1 vs d2 r l so the current is going to flow in the same direction as this one more pulse and that's going to be the positive current so it's going to look something like this here q1 is on then q2 is on then q um, i mean d1 is on then q2 is on and finally d2 is on so this is one cycle one complete cycle is comprised of these four devices to be on and off only one device of course is going to be on at one time now this operation is called uh, non overlapping operation if one device is on let's say d1 is on and you keep q2 off or q1 off then this operation is called non overlapping operation that is none of the device is overlapped with any other device you can also have overlapping operation as you can see over here so q1 is on and d1 is on it overlaps then q2 turn on while d1 is still conducting so this is overlapped and then d2 turn on and we turn q1 on as well so q2 and d2 are pretty much overlapping and d1 and q2 are overlapping so this operation is called overlapping operation we have an example i'm going to come back to the example let me go ahead and discuss the last type of inverter as well which is full bridge resonant inverter with bidirectional switches so pretty much the same as half bridge except now we have four switches and we have four diodes and the load is rlc over here how does it work two switches will be on at the same time so let's say q1 and q2 are going to be turned on current is going to flow vs q1 lrc q2 back to vs current direction is going to be positive since it will be flowing in this direction when it's going to go back to the zero one resonant pulse then c voltage is going to make d1 and d2 both turn on both will become forward bias so the current is going to go c r l d1 v s d2 one pulse in the negative direction because current will be flowing in the opposite direction of i naught when this pulse is going to be finished then we're going to go ahead and turn q3 and q4 on again over non overlapping operation q3 and q4 on so the current is going to go out of vs q3 c r l q4 back to vs opposite direction so negative pulse and once this pulse is gone then again c is going to be have more voltage than vs but the polarity of the voltage will be such that this will be positive right here and here it is going to be negative and that is going to make d3 and d4 forward bias so current is going to flow out of c1 or c d3 vs d4 l r so again in this direction so current will be considered as positive current so the output will be similar if it's a non overlapping operation then the output will be similar to this right here
Now, this circuit can also be operated without the diodes. How? Of course, the first operation is going to be the same. Q1 and Q2 will be on. You have one pulse. And then we go ahead and we turn Q3 and Q4 on. And the current is going to flow in the opposite direction. And then Q1, Q2 on. So the pulse it is going to look something like this. So without diodes, Q1 and Q2 turn off, Q3, Q4 can be turned on, the resultant waveform will be something like this. Uh, equations are similar what we discussed for the first part with the unidirectional switches, all the equations are same uh, for this one as well as for the last one. So this example are based on pretty much sim the same equations that we discussed, so I'm going to come back to this example on in the next video.